Hello, everybody. My name is Paul Quinney, and this is the Flames Face-Off brought to you by the Hockey Writers. Now, this is a weekly show where we bring together some of our best writers in the Calgary Flames writing pool, and we talk all things Flames. Now, to make sure you don't miss an episode, what you can do is subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook, like us on YouTube and Facebook, and share the video with your friends. And be sure uh, to check out some of the great co hockey content that we have here at thehockeywriters.com. So with that, let's get going. I'd like to introduce the panel we have with us this week, Mr. Brett Kraus. Brett, how are you doing? Doing well, Paul. How about yourself? I've got no complaints. Now you're wearing a Blue Jays hat. So are you trying to tell us uh, you'd rather talk about something else other than the Flames today? Uh, yeah, I might be looking forward to the summer sports now, that's for sure. All right. All right. That says something about your, your estimation of their playoff prospects. So yes. Don't dwell on that. And Greg Tzowski, welcome, Greg. Good to see you again, Paul. Yeah, welcome. And uh, none other than Colton Pankew. Colton, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, Paul. I'm good. How are you? No complaint. So let's get right into it. Um, Flames played three games this week. They lost two. That's by... My calculation is 333 hockey. Um, frustrating for sure for the fans. Um, I'd like to get into why you think they lost. My take is, well, they just can't score. They scored uh, five goals in three games. Uh, Colton, what's your take? What, what do you attribute the uh, losing record to this week? I think kind of just the same thing that we've kind of been hashing all year. It's kind of just yeah. inconsistencies. And like you said, goal, like scoring goals. Uh, they've, been, they've had a few guys that have been a bit better as of late. Like Goudreau's looked better this past month. But, I mean, Monaghan outside yeah. of that one game, Kachuk struggled. It's just it's kind of just been the, the story of this season. Yeah. Um, Greg, what's your take on the, on the offense or the lack thereof? Uh... Any insights? Uh, I, I can't figure it out. Well, I think this is, it is what it is. This, this is who they are. This is who they've been all season. So there hasn't been really consistent scoring all year long. As their record would indicate, they win a few, lose a few. The biggest streak of the year is three games. Like they haven't had consistent offense, uh, offensive production all year. So I'm not surprised that they went, you know, 333 this week because you know, they've been, they're an under 500 hockey team. And so, they're three games under 500. And I don't think they're going to get to 500 by the end of this year. So I just say this, this is what it is. And this is why they're going to be big discussions in the off season, because they just, uh, they, they couldn't score enough goals. They couldn't stop enough goals. It's, you know, it's like, they're just not a good enough team. So nothing surprises me anymore with, with, with this team, if they have a good week or a bad week, because that's been the story of the whole year. Yeah. Uh, Brett, your take on that. I mean, Greg's pointing out that, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, they're just not that good a hockey team. They could, and bad hockey teams don't score goals. Uh, any insights uh, from your standpoint? Yeah, I think I definitely agree there. I think this this week has just been the, the statement of their entire season. They just weren't getting the scoring from the guys who usually, you know, do the scoring. Monaghan's coming in for a career low here, like very low. Uh, especially in the goals department, which is a kind of a guy you count on to, you know, then maybe one or, or two extra a week might have given you a couple more points. But uh, yeah, I think this week was just kind of the way it's gone this whole season. It was just this is this is the team. I'm not so much I'm not so much sure it's the team that they are because I I think they can be better, but I think this is definitely the team that they've been all season, just inconsistent. And you know when they get the saves from Markstrom. They just couldn't get the goals. So I, I think, yeah, it's just been a roller coaster season like that. Yeah. Well, the only goal scoring going on here is, is from Goudreau and, and Lindholm. Uh, Goudreau is surprising because uh, I didn't think he'd do well under Sutter, but he is. Um, speaking of one guy though, that uh, has been underperforming under Sutter is Matthew Tuchuk. Um, he's had a dreadful year. All his numbers are uh, back to what they were when he was a rookie. Uh, he's basically been missing in action all season. What's going on with him? Uh, Colton, any thoughts there? Yeah, it kind of all relates back to near the beginning of the season with that whole Jake Muzzin incident. And I 
personally think that kind of got overplayed a bit. Um, but it, it does kind of go back to that. I don't know if maybe just the media attention to that did something. I don't know. I'm not worried about him in the long term. I think he'll he'll bounce back. But it just hasn't been the fit that I know I personally and you guys too thought under Sutter it would be. Um, his ice time has been cut a bit and he's just snake bitten right now. I think he, he hasn't scored in I don't even know how many games. So, yeah, it's just been a season to forget for him. Yeah. Greg, any any thoughts on uh, him? You know, I'm I'm kind of willing, you know, like I've been kind of reading some stuff over the last few weeks about this entire NHL season and how some players have gone missing in action and others haven't, have, others have stepped up. And I'm kind of starting to wonder if some players kind of just don't thrive in this environment where there's like no fans and maybe there's no envy. Maybe Matthew Kachuk is someone who needs that energy of the crowd. Maybe he needs something more than just these empty arenas, you know, with piped in noise and tarps everywhere can provide. And uh, I, I thought maybe that could be a factor as why it's a down year. If he had two down years in a row, I, I would worry, but I'm kind of with Colton. I'm not going to worry about him long-term just yet. And also and then I was thinking about, well, maybe, you know, you know, look, maybe he's playing like a player who doesn't want to be here. And, and, and I, I never had thought of that option before because he always seemed to be like the next captain and, you know, people in Calgary seem to love his style of play and who he is. And he's a pest, super pest. And so maybe that's a possibility, although, you know, I've, I've never really uh, heard any rumors about that. So I'm just kind of stumped. because This is why I'm kind of grasping at straws here as to why someone who is this, the team's um, leading point getter last year has just kind of been missing in action and um, hasn't been a factor in so many games. Like he seemed invisible so many games. So you got me. I'm stumped. Yeah. Brett, you got any explanation for him? I mean, is this just a one-off and he'll be back next year? Or? I'm kind of more leaning towards that. Yeah, it's a, it's a one-off. Um, mm. I, I definitely agree with Greg. You know, I think it, it could be a, a crowd, like, a, you know, fanless arena kind of thing. As a guy who kind of thrives off doing those high, ener- making those high energy hits and, you know, and getting the crowd going. And uh, I've kind of been thinking too, like, a lot of these guys in the NHL probably haven't played in front of an empty arena since they were maybe 12, 13. So they're probably used to, you know, playing in front of these big crowds. And and now it's kind of like they're playing in my beer league where the, the spouses don't even show up to the game. So uh, I, th- I think that has a factor to it. You know, I think they try and say that they, they don't really notice no fans and when the, piped in crowd noise but i i think it definitely has an effect but um you know he's still he's still third in in points on the team although you know most of the team hasn't been doing well so that's that's kind of why i think it's it it's just a one-off for now and i i think there's there's no reason to worry just yet all right all right what's um let me see if i got this right uh he becomes a restricted free agent at the end of the next season yeah, and right. his qualifying offer uh, has got to be nine million bucks. Uh, Colton, do you think he's worth nine million bucks? <laughs> I mean, how he's played this season, not even no. Obviously, um, going forward, like obviously he's still young and he's shown in the past, like he's a guy that can really do it all because he's he's offensively skilled. He gets under opponents' skin. I mean. Really, aside from maybe Brad Marchand, I'm not sure if there's a player fans on for other teams hate more in the league. So, I mean, he's good in that sense, obviously. Um, but, yeah, he'll need to show in a lot more next season, obviously. Um, and I, I think he will. I think he'll bounce back. But this season, no, he's nowhere near a 9 million player, maybe not even half of that. Yeah. Greg, what's your take? Uh, well, you know, one view is that uh, Treliving doesn't have the room, the cap space, to sign both uh, Gaudreau and Tuchuk. So of the two, uh, what, what are your thoughts on a $9 million salary there for? Yeah, Anthony? well, I, I, I've I, always, like, from, from what I've heard, like, he was – I don't know if there's anyone who is, like, quote-unquote untouchable, but – I think Matthew Kachuk is probably one of the closest things you could call to that. So I would be very surprised if they didn't invest in him as opposed to Goudreau, who, who's, let's face it, has been facing trade rumors for seemingly like for years now. There's always like trade Goudreau, trade Goudreau. But, you know, until the season, this down season for Kachuk, I've never really heard, even heard a whisper that, you know, we should get rid of him. So I would be very surprised, you know, like uh, if they signed 
you know, Goudreau over Kachuk. And uh, so I'm fully expecting that Johnny Hockey trade to be, you know, we're going to pull that trigger this summer. That's, that's my, uh, my big prediction. So like, and I don't know um, if there'll be like extending, you know, Kachuk anytime soon. I think we we really have to see how he bounces back next year because I don't think they're hitting the panic button on him just yet. So I think he's still kind of the cornerstone they they want to build around. So I think, uh, I think he's safe. He's safe and sound in Calgary for a while yet. Yeah. Well, you actually, so let's switch gears here. Uh, Greg, you you mentioned the untouchables. Um, Brett, uh, what are your thoughts? Is, Is anyone on the team untouchable now? Uh, are we looking at a major reorg? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think Kachuk for me is, would be one, uh, mostly because of, you know, the player he is so far and how old he is. I mean, he's only in his early mid to close to mid twenties, I think 23 or four now. Um, and I think, you know, Goudreau's, uh, coming up on 28 this year. So I think he, he becomes, one of the ones you might think about moving if you're kind of, if, if they have a sort of a franchise philosophy meeting here this, this summer, you know, where you go, you look at Kachuk, Anderson, Hannafin and Manjapane all at that 22 to five age range. And I think that's kind of begins to be your core group. Um, I, I think Lindholm as well. He's a bit older. I think he's 25 or six now, but, um, I think he's a guy that's in there too, but I, I think you have to start moving, looking towards your younger guys and kind of moving with them and insulating those guys with younger guys. Um, I think th- if it's possible, the team should try to keep Goudreau, but I mean, if that's a, a move you have to make, then I think that's the conversation you have to start having. Yeah. Colton, what are your thoughts? Uh uh, Brett's laid out a few untouchables there. Uh, would, would you add to it or take away from it at all? To Chuck's no. Uh, yeah. And the other one I was going to bring up, which he did at the end was Lindholm. Um, just for the contract alone. I mean, I think he's been their most consistent player, at least up front all year. And I think he still has three more seasons left at a cap hit under 5 million. So he's definitely one that I think you try to build around as opposed to move off. Yeah. Greg, anybody to add to the list as untouchables or? Well, um, the only one that kind of comes to mind is, is, is if to me is Markstrom because they kind of waited a long time to get this franchise goaltender. And uh, I don't think, you know, you know, they, they say, oh, he's, a, he's the best one since Kippersoff. Everyone's been kind of so excited about him and he kind of had an up and down year. I, I'll admit that, but I would be surprised if they, if they punted him anytime soon because he's supposedly the answer to our, goaltending woes that have been going on, you know, for years and years, we've had like, you know, a dozen goaltenders, you know, in the past, you know, 10 years or so. So it's, I think, uh, I think he would, I would add him, him to the list as well. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of goaltending, uh, let's switch over to that topic. Uh, Brett, uh, you know, what do the flames do next year? They've, they've just got marks through them. No, in my estimation, no real credible, uh, backup. Um, what do they look for in the off season? Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like Riddick's coming back. It sounds like he's going to look for a better opportunity and probably more money. Um, he's kind of established himself. Uh, a, a guy that I've kind of been interested in uh, down in Florida is uh, Chris Drieger, who's kind of you know be, uh, <clears throat> made a bit of a name for himself down there. I mean, they've got Sergei Bobrovsky signed to that long-term deal and they've just brought in spencer knight who was the americans goalie at the world juniors and he's off to a a good start uh right now and so uh, i think around the deadline they had said that you know drieger's name was out there uh and he's actually a former calgary hitman so he's he's familiar with the the city and he played here for a few years uh so i think if that's a guy i think you should look into uh, if he is cheap, because I think he's under a million right now, and that's what the Flames need unless they move out money this summer, is they're going to need a guy who they can bring in for under a million but can also you know, provide a little bit of stability when if Markstrom kind of falters again next season. Yeah. So I noticed you didn't mention big snag zag there. 
So uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not too high on him just yet. He hasn't hasn't impressed me at the AHL level just yet. Yeah. Um, so Colton, you you wrote a good article this week on uh, I think it was entitled uh, "Intriguing Goaltending op- Options for the Flames." Um, I don't know that Dreger made it on that list, but tell us some more about that. Who made it and uh, and why? And realistically, of the three. Who do you think they could uh, snag? No pun intended. Um, yeah, I think uh, I was just looking at free agent options. So I actually do like uh, Brett's suggestion and in Florida, I, I, Dreger, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correct, but he's posted really good numbers this season and last year too. So, I mean, that'd be a really interesting pickup if they were able to make something happen there. Uh, the three I included were just, yeah, like I said, free agent goalies. So anti Ranta and Phoenix who, will get a really cheap contract, I think, after he's had a lot of injury problems. But when he is healthy, he has shown that he can be a starting goalie. Um, Yaroslav Halak, which was a bit of a stretch coming out of Boston. I don't know if he would really want to leave any if he doesn't get offers anywhere or if he doesn't return there. Um, but the one uh, realistic one I was thinking was Laurent Brassois in Winnipeg. Um, he's been pretty good behind Hellebuck the last few years, and he's familiar in Calgary, too. He was drafted by them in I say 2013 or somewhere, somewhere around there in the sixth round. So he's a familiar face and yeah, he's done pretty good in a limited role behind Hellebuck, which is what they would need behind Markstrom right now. Yeah. What do you think, Greg? Are you liking any of those options that Colton's raised or would you go in? Well, a you know, I, I've actually seen a few Jets games over you know, the last couple of seasons and Bruce Law, I always thought was a pretty decent backup. And, uh, but I kind of have a, another, not really suggestion, but like, down, down the stretch here, like now that it's pretty much, I know the Flames will probably keep trying until they're mathematically el- eliminated, but um, I think the Flames would be a good idea to see Louis third string Domingue in a few games and just see what they have in him. You know, because yeah. he hasn't, he, he's played some AHL games and he's been on the taxi squad all year. And now he's actually been the backup ever since, you know, big save Dave, you know, left town and he hasn't seen one minute of any game. And so um, if they have any thoughts of, bringing him back, you're keeping him in the organization to have, you know, with, with the, uh, the AHL team or whatever they want. They, they really need to see what they have in this guy because he's not far removed from playing like, like 30 games with uh, Tampa, like a couple of seasons ago. Like he was, uh, he has like 140 NHL games under his belt. Like he hasn't played much in the last couple of years, but you know, there it's, it's not unheard of to have like a, a goalie who has, you know, maybe people have written off and then all of a sudden they make kind of a, resurgence and they have a career like look at I I think Devin Dubnik was kind of ran out of town um, a couple of couple of places and he ended up having a pretty good career you know now he's probably at the tail end of it but like he's he's someone who like was kind of left in the trash heap and was you know resurrected himself so maybe Louis Mm Domingue can do the same thing it's just I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility that the Flames could try out yeah well, full marks to you for coming up with these uh, monikers for goaltenders. Uh, <laughs> I think you came up with Big Snag Zag, and now it's uh, Third String Deming. So I'm, I'm writing all this stuff down. <laughs> I think I heard that somewhere. I'm not sure if I made that up, but uh, it, it, it kind of rings a bell. So, but, yeah. uh, no, I think I think every goalie needs a good nickname, you know, because uh, they're yeah. – Well, know. I don't know. Colton, just really fast. And, and Brett, uh, what do you think of Third String Deming? Should they give him a shot? Serious look? Um, I, I mean, I think so. Like uh, I was kind of just saying, like they're going to need somebody who's cheap and that's a guy who comes in probably at under a, a million dollars. So if there's something there, you know, why not? I, I think they're going to, I don't think they'll use Markstrom like they used to Kippersov, but I, I think they're looking to use Markstrom more. So they're going to want more of a, a second string guy instead of that one, a one B kind of situation they've had. So yeah, I think if, might as well just use them for a couple of games in those last few, see what, see what they got, um, kind of what they can do. Yeah. Colton, what, 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 uh, any thoughts on the Ming? Yeah. Same thing. Um, yeah. behind Mark, when you're looking for a guy who's not going to play much at all, I think he's obviously the guy they're going to ride next year. And like Brett said, he'd be, he'd be cheap. So I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the, uh, defense. So Sutter, Last week, I think it was, or maybe it was this week, he, he called out the young D-men uh, without naming Anderson and Val Mackey. Uh, he said, quote, 
I think one of the reasons that we're not in a playoff spot is there are three or four young defensemen that have not lived up to the expectations this year. So uh, we've got eight or nine games to compete with each and find out which one or two are able to take the next step. Uh, he's obviously not talking about Tanev or Giordano. So it leaves Anderson, Valimaki, uh, Shillington, I'd add to the list, maybe Mackey. Um, is this tough love or is it unconstructive criticism? Uh, what do you think, uh, Greg? Well, first of all, I'm surprised that uh, – well, I, I am surprised that I'm not surprised because uh, Daryl Sutter is someone who does call people out and he's had, had a bit of a history of being, you know, kind of a tough coach at times. But uh, it's pretty rare in this day and age for an NHL head coach to really, you know, call out players like that. And, you know, this is, you know, the reason why we haven't made the playoffs or one of the reasons – so, and I, I, I would agree with him because, because Anderson was supposed to take the next step, you know, and be in the top pairing with Giordano. And he didn't, he, he's, he's put up some good points this year, you know, decent point, but he hasn't been that, that steady, reliable presence. So he's kind of fallen on his face. And Val Mackey, there was talk about, you know, Calder trophy consideration. And like, that obviously didn't happen. And uh, he seemed to start out a bit better and kind of faded. And I think he lost a lot of confidence under Sutter because like he uh, maybe wasn't, wasn't playing his style and, I, w- I would agree with Sutter that these young guys have not played up to, up to snuff, you know, and uh, Shillington hasn't played that much, six games, I think in total. So it's h- kind of hard to lump him in there because he's been on the taxi squad for most of the year. It has been a frustrating season for those young guys. And, uh, and I don't know if, if, if end of this year is, is the time that they can really make a big impression. Maybe they have to just hit the reset button and see what they got next year, because they're all, you know, the future of the defensive core. And we kind of need those guys to be, you know, the future because you know Giordano is not getting any, any younger and, and Ten have been great but he's like an old guy too so like we, we need those guys and uh, the, the criticism is fair I'm, I'm just a bit surprised that Sutter was so bold as to kind of call them out on it yeah um Brett what are your what, what are your thoughts on the criticism and and those four uh defensemen um what do what what does he do with them yeah, I'm kind of on the fence about it because, I mean, you know, you look at Val Mackey, he's spent an entire year uh, rehabbing a knee injury. And then I think his, you know, early season over in Finland kind of set the bar a little high because, I mean, the, the Finnish league is nowhere close to the NHL. So he, you know, excelled and everyone was kind of had big expectations and he hasn't probably lived up to them. But I think, yeah, he, for kind of the prospect that he is I think yeah a little bit of a disappointing season but I I'd say very fair criticism for Anderson I think there was a lot of excitation for him to you know take that next big step and you know become a top four d-man on this team and it, it just hasn't happened he hasn't looked as as good as he has in the past so I'm not sure you know maybe he needs a little bit softer minutes and uh kind of to kind of sort his game out again but um so yeah, I, I kind of think, and like Greg said, I th- guys like Shillington just haven't played enough. You know, I, I kind of think that if you're so critical of Valimaki, maybe you should have given Shillington a, a couple more games than just six over this entire season. So it's kind of, cause you know, there's still room to grow for those guys. And so I th- think it was, I would have liked to have seen Shillington in a couple more games than just on the taxi squad, but um, yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm with him and I'm, all, and uh, I think it was good that he, you know, basically kept it anonymous, but non-anonymous. Everyone kind of knows who it is, yeah. but, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I think it was, it was fair. Yeah. Colton, uh, what are your thoughts on Valimaki versus, uh, the others? I mean, that's a good point. If he was that dissatisfied, if Sutter that is, was that unhappy with him? Then, uh, why was he playing them? Uh, one view on that, I guess, is he's the future of the defense core, but uh, any, any thoughts on, uh, on the defense situation in Calgary? Yeah, I think with Valimaki, I think like Brett said, I think uh, coming into the season, he had some pretty big expectations put on him that were maybe unfair for a guy who had very limited NHL experience. Um, obviously, yeah, we all had hoped that he would be better than he has been this year. And at the same time regarding Shillington, I think like that's a guy, I think he's still only 23 years old. So it's pretty disappointing pointing just like the lack of game time I guess even last year he didn't play a ton either 
Um, so I, hopefully like down the stretch here, I think since we're all in agreement that playoffs are not happening, hopefully he can get in a few more games and maybe build towards next year. I'm not sure what their plan is with him. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets moved on, but uh, yeah, just overall, it's been a disappointing season for that blue line, but kind of like the whole team. I, I think uh, hopefully next year is just more of a bounce back for all of them. Mm. Well, actually, you lead into a, an interesting subject. Um, given that they're out of the playoffs, let's call a spade a spade. Um, who do you want to see up uh, playing uh, in a regular slot so that, that we can have a look at them? Uh, there's a number of players, uh, I don't know, on the defense. Uh, Kuznetsov, I don't know if it's possible. Mackey, I'd like to see him again. What, what are your thoughts on that, Colton? I mean, you wrote an article on Kuznetsov recently. Yeah, when they had first signed him. Um, yeah, I don't know if he's one just as yet. Just he's a bit younger, but I think um, like Mackey's one, and then a couple guys up front like Matthew Phillips. I've kind of been pushing mm -hmm. for all year. I'd really like to see him. Um, so yeah, I would say those would be the two big ones for me. Would be Mackey and Phillips. Yeah, Greg, what are your thoughts? I mean, you wrote a good piece uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think it was uh, saying, "Hey, you know, let's." Uh, Stop the charade of thinking we're going to get a playoff spot and give some others a chance to uh, come up and show their stuff. Uh, who would be on that list for you? Yeah, you know, I I also wrote like a, a, about a month and a half ago when you know when the fourth line was struggling if they could bring up some AHL options. And again, Matthew Phillips is top of the list, but Adam Rizichko has also had a great start um, to the season, and he was just flying. And that 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 top line of uh, in the AHL Stockton Heat were we're just, you know, out of the gate, we're just playing fantastic hockey and exciting hockey. And uh, Matthew Phillips is kind of this kind of this little bundle of energy where he's like, you know, he skates so well and he, people don't know where he's going to go next. He has a small guy. So um, I think he'd be so exciting to watch. And he would just, you know, down the stretch here with, with, where the games are meaningless and there's not a lot of pressure. You can just kind of let these guys go and just see what they've got and see what, and assess some of their performance at the highest possible level. So he's probably at the top of my list as well. And uh, it's, he's been kind of the guy in waiting for you know a couple of seasons now. And, uh, and uh, he's actually, he's, he's older than some of the, some of the younger guys we even have on our team. So he, he, he he's not um, like a super young prospect. I think he's seasoned enough. So that's, that's the guy, Matthew Phillips. I've been pushing for him too, you know, to join this team for a long time. So, yeah. Let's see him. Bring him up. Brett, who uh, who do you want to see? Who would you add to that list? Or uh, who do you disagree with from what you've heard so far? Uh, I think I agree yeah, with both Greg and Colts. And uh, Matthew Phillips, for sure, is uh, number one, I'd say. I think a lot of people think he's he's got a legitimate shot to be a player in this league. Uh, you know, watching a few games this year, I think – his decision making is just so good. He it kind of overcomes his incredibly short stature, and I, I think he's a guy who could you know really benefit from playing with someone like a Matthew Kachuk, who could you know just make a little room for him, and you know he makes the decisions out there when he's got the puck and kind of knows where everybody is. So um, he'd be number one on my list, and I think yeah, Adam Rzichka started really well. Uh, I know they invited him to the return to play camp there last summer. So they obviously see something in him as well. So I think those are two guys I'd like to see get a, a game at least, you know, if they're still here in town, bring them in for a couple of home games and just kind of say they can do. Cause I mean, there's, yeah, like the guys said, there there's pretty much all but mathematically eliminated right now, whether they believe it or not. Um, so I think, I think it's time you got to, got to bring in some some new guys for the, the end of the season here a couple of players you guys didn't mention uh if, if you just want to come give me a quick comments on it uh there was uh pospisil uh, uh zary and uh emilio peterson uh what are your thoughts on any of those three uh colton i'll just take a crack at the, those three could you bring them I think up yeah, I think Zary, since he's back in Kamloops, uh, I, I don't know if that even – I'm not sure, like, what the rules are there, but I think – I don't think we'll see him this year. Uh, Pospisil was a guy at the start of the year. I, I haven't followed as closely since, but I know he got off to a pretty good start, and he's more of, like, a physical, gritty guy too. So I think he's one they could call up and 
you don't necessarily have to worry about maybe giving top six minutes or top nine minutes, even like a Phillips, um, who's more of a skill guy. So he could be a guy that I think would, uh, that could get a few games here down the stretch. Yeah. Greg, any, your thoughts on any of those three? Well, I actually wrote uh, about, you know, the AHL, you know, prospects who might be able to, you know, to get called up. And like Emilio Pedersen um, is someone who's, he's still pretty young and not very seasoned. And he's been playing hockey at the University of Denver in the NCAA and uh, for the past couple of seasons. And uh, this is his first pro year. And so some might think that he's not re- quite ready to come up yet, but uh, he's a kind of a skilled player and um smart player and you know i would i would say at this point the flames you should say you know all, all bets are off Let, let's just see what we have in some of these guys like they're they they could call them up for like a couple of games and just you know and i think he's someone who might pro- provide some more offense to this team that's been struggling to score goals so i'd, I'd like to see Pedersen up because uh he could be an exciting player in the future like he's not nhl ready yet like matthew phillips but i think he's He's someone they should at least have a look at, you know, in the last couple of games of the season. You know, why not? Mm-hmm. Hey, Brad, are you, are you liking uh, the possibility of Patterson, Popsill, or uh, Zary? Would you touch any of those? Um, I, w- I would. Uh, I know because Popsill got off to a great start this year in the AHL, but uh, he actually, is, I think, is required surgery. He took a brutal knee on knee hit and he's been out for a couple months now i didn't realize that okay yeah the the player from i think it was laval actually got suspended for four or five games for the hit Mm. um but he would he would be a guy i'd be interested in because i think he was close to a point per game to start um although a lot of those guys started off quite the whole team started off hot um and I, I agree with Colton. I don't think we'll see Connor's area. I'm not sure how much longer the WHL is going, but with six games here left for the Flames, I don't think we'll see it. Um, and I, I like Peterson. He, I think he's a he's somewhat bigger than Phillips. I'm not sure how tall he is, but uh, kind of the same, you know, skill set. He's he's very skilled, good with the puck. Um, so I think, you know, Ruzicka, Pedersen. Uh, Phillips would be guys I'd like to see maybe, maybe even create a fourth line of those guys to just go out against teams bottom six for a, a you know kind of a last game of the year kind of thing and uh, even even Connor Mackey I think he he went on like a five or six game point streak with Stockton down there um, so if you know, a guy like Yusuf Valimaki is not turning Sutter's crank maybe you know get yeah. Connor Mackey out there because he already has a couple of games uh, with the flames this season. So, yeah, well, I really hope they bring up some of these guys that we've been talking about. It'll make the last, what is it? Five games a little more interesting than I think they otherwise will be. Uh, but anyway, uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. As always, it's been a really interesting discussion, but unfortunately we just run out of time. Uh, and thank you everybody for joining us for another edition of flames face off uh, we'll be back next sunday with another edition uh, and in the meantime uh, be sure to subscribe to this youtube channel and follow us on twitter and facebook uh, like us on youtube and facebook and if you've liked what you've seen over the last few weeks do share these uh these sessions with your friends uh, and be sure to check out the uh, hockeywriters.com uh, where you'll find our Flames Weekly. It comes out every Monday and it recaps all the action in the previous weeks and gives a snapshot of what's to come in the, uh, in the upcoming week. And be sure to check out uh, all the great hockey content that we have here at the hockeywriters.com. Until next week, take care. <laughs>